Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Commission Breath. We are kicking off 2024 in a year that looks like it's going to be a rate declining market for the first time in a while for us. So today we're going to share some strategies for you to use to either reactivate some older business or to draw in some newer business. Brandon Love here with my good buddy, Tom Moffitt. Hope you had a restful holidays and are ready to crush it in the new year. We are ready to go, man. I'm I'm super pumped. And you know what I'm actually really excited about with the rate declining market is no more rate holds, dude. I know like some people will be like, oh, you still got to hold rates. But like, fuck, like I would only hold rates if I knew rates were going to go up. And uh, I'm just excited to not do them anymore. I, I hate them. I absolutely hate doing them. Yeah, it, it was a little painful. And I'll be honest, there was a stretch where a couple of times I missed them because I wasn't in the habit of doing it. And then I had to put it in my process to, to implement them, to not have that happen to me again. But uh, I'm glad to, to be free of it. Yeah, man, it was a necessary evil. It was a good way to retain current clients, but fuck, it sucked. Anyways, first point here is something that you and I are going through right now, crafting an email template for this. So what we're doing is we are creating a templated email that we're going to send to targeted people in our database that have come out to us in the last year or so in terms of a lead aspect. So if they've been a lead and they've come into our world and they expressed interest in, into getting into the market, then what we're doing is we're targeting them by breaking down, first of all, rates have already dropped. Nobody's talking about the fixed rates. So we're talking about that in the email. We're saying, hey, fixed rates have gone down. Here's what you need to know about them. First of all, we're gonna outline the savings that that they're going to have over the five-year term from the time that we saw our first cut in the time of recording this i believe it's six weeks we've had roughly a 60 basis point drop so whatever that number is put that in the email template break it down from a dollar perspective the second thing you want to outline is the fact that you have a higher uh, affordability so your mortgage amount is going to be higher typically because of the stress test so you're going to outline that in the email and you're going to create urgency on it then once you have this email templated crafted you're going to send that out to the targeted people in your list. And then you're also going to send that out to referral partners, give them a call, explain what this template's going to do. And you could even create a second template from the first one to craft it specific to your realtor partners. So they don't have to make any tweaks. They can send that out to their database. And that way you are not just using your own database, you're leveraging theirs as well. For sure. And you're just trying to get those people who got cold feet, who are sitting on their hands and you're getting them to to move in a little bit quicker. So it's it's not a, the other strategy that we'll share a little bit later on that has more to do with different client profiles. This one is to do with those clients who have buyer hesitation and just getting them a little bit lubed up for the journey. Uh, the next one here I like is it. lubed up for the journey. Let's go. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> I saw you <laughs> Uh, the next one here is to share this with your referral partners, as Tom alluded to there, as well as to your existing audience, because they might have other clients or friends in their network who are talking a lot about, you know, waiting for the bottom of the market. I'm, I'm going to hold off for now. I'm not sure where things are headed. And that hesitation there, if, if they have some insights to share with their community, I kind of allude this to like the the red car theory if i tell you to look for a red car you're going to see 10 red cars today versus if you're not paying attention for it you're not going to see any um so this is kind of the thing if if someone knows hey i can save my friend thousands of dollars by sharing this with them or i can help my friend get into a market and not mix, miss the next wave they're going to do it and these conversations do come up and it gives that opportunity for them to uh to share there yeah, in social specifically, what you're going to want to do is uh, pick your platform. If you're already on Instagram, I'll talk about that specifically because that's what we're doing. But you're going to want to do that through different mediums. So you're going to want to do that through Reels because it's, you're going to create that hook video that we've been talking about. So you have that clear hook at the beginning of the video. You're going to have that try to go as viral as possible to bring people in. Repost it on TikTok, whatever else you're doing there if you want to or just do it on Instagram, whatever platform you're on. The second thing you want to do is is get that on stories as well. Keep it super short, concise, have a uh, a plain background on it. I find that when I do stories where it's just the written text, not even video, like written text has been working well for me lately. Um, just do that written text and have like the the background, like say a black color, the text white. Those perform very well. And I find a lot of people 
um, engage on those as well. If you're if you're breaking down again the the savings of the rate drops on there, and you create that urgency, then you will get some people that that will reach out, and you'll get referral partners sharing that story as well. So again, you're tapping into their database, but now it's their social database. Exactly, and and what we're just doing is just giving people good news to share with other people. It's not complicated. It's very simple, but it does have a compounding effect if you get a lot of people doing it. When you're talking to these clients and any potential clients that come into your world, you want to be pitching what we call rate insurance. So number one, what is rate insurance? What it is, is that we are monitoring between now and close if rates drop with your existing lender or if rates come up, like a promotion comes up with a different lender who's a better fit for you, we're going to move you over there. The whole idea is just to keep the client knowing that you're doing the best for them from the moment they agree to to work with you up until closing date. So they're not tempted to go pop in and meet with their RBC representative or sit on Rate Hub and try to click through a bunch of things there. You're just keeping them in your world because they know that you're looking out for their best interests. Yeah, and there's a different way to do rate insurance as well. Like I know some people, they do um, the variable rate monitoring. You can pitch that as your rate insurance, but we, like us specifically, we use rate insurance as, like you mentioned, like we're monitoring up until closing and even past closing too. But like specifically for this strategy for a rate declining market, this is going to be super effective and we're doing it right now. We're seeing really good results, stickier clients. We're saving money for clients, which they absolutely love. And um, it's really a good way to get Google reviews too, which we'll, we'll dive into the next the topic there. But um, the rate insurance, I always like to pitch that in the discovery call up front. So I explain what it is very briefly and just to make that stickier. So they're already not thinking about going to the bank or wherever else they're shopping. They know we do some, some other things differently on our end. And I'm also really going in depth on the rate insurance with our strategy videos. So for us, we don't do strategy calls. Like I know the standard for brokers and loan officers is to do that strategy call after the pre-approval or slightly, sorry, uh, right before the pre-approval. But what we do is when we send the pre-approval email, we'll have that video breakdown of the budget with a certain strategy and all of that good stuff. And once they get an accepted offer, that if they're purchasing, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna send that rate strategy confirmation email and in there, we're going to have that video breakdown of the different options for them in terms of like what lender they want to go with. We compare it all on the Excel spreadsheet and everything. But what we also do is we explain the rate insurance in there as, as well in more depth because we want to hit them either two or three times through the process to remind them of that, to know that we have their back and they don't need to shop anywhere else. Exactly. And another big piece this to this is a templated email that we send out when we do actually perform this service. It's one thing to talk about it, but if you're not actually monitoring and, and implementing it, you're just blowing smoke up their arse. So what we do is if we if we say, okay, Scotia drop their rates, every one of our Scotia clients, we just send our BDM an email and just say, hey, can you lower all their rates? Everyone's happy. We don't just leave it as, hey, we got you a lower rate. We send them a templated email that says, hey, Tom, just wanted to let you know, instead of you know 5.69, you're now paying 5.39. Um, and this over the term of your mortgage is going to save you X. It outlines how much they're saving. And then it also is another opportunity if they haven't already given us a review for us to ask for a Google review or also another ask, and this is one that I've been preferring to do lately, is there anyone else in your network who's shopping right now whose lender isn't looking out for their needs like we are like this? You can really go far with this too. And we've been doing that. We have two different call to actions. Mine, I like to get those Google reviews because I find it super easy to get them at that point. Like who doesn't like seeing an email coming in saying, hey, your rate has dropped. You've saved 6K over your term and your monthly payment has gone $200 uh, lower. Like everyone loves that. When you see the subject line, your rate has dropped. That's, I think that's what I have for my subject line. Fuck it, it kills. And yeah. with that, like take it one step further. You can give your client a text after you send that email or a call. Be like, hey, I've got a surprise for you. Go check out your email or reach out to your referral partner. Hey, just to let you know, I'm saving your client X amount of dollars because of our rate insurance. They might ask what it is, they might love it. They might want to post on on social. So you could really take this uh, 
or the full mile. For sure. And that social piece you add there is another thing that we do. And we're going to be doing a lot more of it because we realize that a lot of the wins we've been doing, we haven't always shared them on social media. So we're going to bring these wins to social media and be, hey, this is how we saved a client $3,000. They didn't have to do anything. They didn't even have to sign an additional document. We just kept an eye out for a better opportunity for them longer than any other player in their network would. And it's like, okay, what's the differentiator? This guy's got my back all the way through. Yeah, and uh, just keep in mind when you're doing this to know your lenders because some lenders, uh, so we're talking specifically in Canada, like some of them, they'll only allow you to do one rate drop before closing. So you want to make sure you're either sending your business to lenders that allow you to do the unlimited drops or if you are with a lender that does that one, you got to strategize on this, put it in your calendar, put it in notes and maybe revisit it two weeks prior to closing and that's when you... Uh, you send out that rate request because if you do it too early, you're actually costing your client more money doing it that way. And I did that early in my career. Like I didn't know that. And I was sending out the rate request, like as soon as the first rate dropped and I'm like, I thought it was a win. It's like, oh, this is awesome. And then I kept seeing the rates go further down. I'm like, fuck, yeah. I just miss on a huge opportunity. But uh, yeah, just make sure you do that. I've, I've done the same thing before. And actually one thing to note here is if you, if you've done this and you're like, oh crap, that's me, I've done it, and you have a closing that's still pushing, I would call that BDM and that underwriter, explain that you didn't know there was only one thing and ask for like a, a forgiveness there. Uh, quite often they will give it. And in my case, I just apologized and said, hey, I, I didn't realize this was the way things were done. And they gave me that flexibility. The other piece there is to say to the BDM, hey, here's the list of clients I have with you that I'm hypothetically going to to want to do this for, can you let me know if rates are potentially moving in the other direction so that I can then lock that option in there? And I had one lender who she just monitored it for me. So then when rates were coming back up a bit, like the bottom was there, she shot me a quick note and she said, send in all your rate requests now. And Sweet. it was Sweet. perfect. Awesome. Yeah. And that's just leveraging relationships. You're going to build these relationships and, and connect more with your lenders, the more deals you do. Um, but it doesn't hurt to ask this if, even if you're early in the process. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay. So what's our next point here, Tom? Well, we got to share our wins. I mean, uh, we've already talked about that, but you've got to share them on social. And that's something that I've been trying to do. It's hard to really stay consistent with it, to be honest. Like the easiest way to do it is let's say you send out that email template and you're breaking down the cost of it. You might have like three or four in one day. I mean, it depends on how many files you're doing, but let's just say you have one or two in a week, like stockpile them. And I like to either spread them out or do them all in one day and put, take a screenshot of the actual email template with the savings and put them all in like one story. And it just looks like it's, it's insane. Cause it's like, people are going to see, wow, you're looking out for your clients back. You've saved them this much money and it's to multiple clients. One, it makes you look like you're slinging mortgages. And two, it makes you look like you're a pro and you're saving people money. So um, that's what I want to do more of. I've done it a couple of times, but this is something that we'll be both doing actively uh, as we go into this rate declining market. For sure. And I think a good point there is to use like the carousel kind of style of posts, like the five pictures or whatever it is, because they can just swipe through and see that. This also gives you a great opportunity where someone, if a clients don't always understand rate insurance, sometimes there's a bit of disconnect there. So you can go say, okay, here's what it is. Here's a video of me explaining what it is on social media. Here's proof is in the pudding. Here is another set of uh, screenshots of people that I saved money. And that's just from one week. Okay. And the clients at that point, it's so much social proof. And really when they're in this position, they're shopping you maybe against another broker, but likely against their bank. Their bank's just like, yeah, we'll give you the lowest rate at the time. Don't worry about it. Okay, but what is the lowest rate? Is it the lowest rate with you or is it the lowest rate in the market? So you just want to plant that seed of doubt and then provide overwhelming evidence of how much better your process and systems are. Yeah, that's a great point. I didn't even think about that. Like bake that into your client journey at, at some point, like whether it's once they're pre-approved, have an automated email send out. I'm not a big automated email kind of guy, but I know a lot of you listening are. So whatever CRM you're using, maybe you like plug that in and have that as like an automated email once they're pre-approved or maybe send that out manually uh, when the time's right. 
whatever you decide on doing, plug that into your client journey. I love showing examples of of the the wins that you have for your clients. I think that's great. Proof is in the pudding. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> um, one last point too is uh, with your referral partners too. As we go into this market where we're seeing those rate reductions, I, both of us have seen this, Brandon. Like we've we've had some elaborate ideas on giving value adds to our realtor partners, and I find the more elaborate they are. We th we're so excited for it. We're like, fuck, they're going to love this. And then they, we just get crickets. Like to give you an example, like back in the day, we were um, showing them how to improve their Google business profile and get pushed to the top of the rankings. And like hardly any of them really cared. Like they cared for it, but they, they didn't care enough to like actually book a call and go through it. Yes, we're showing them value there. That's like the main point of it. But I find a lot of them lately are responding so much to any rate news or mortgage news or mortgage strategies, which it, in my head, I'm thinking like, man, I would much rather see some sort of like marketing strategy or a way to build my business. Like that's me, but all of them seem to just love talking about rates. So why don't you just give them what they want and update them with the rates dropping? Because at the end of the day, if you're getting more interaction and more conversations with your realtor partners, that's going to feed you more business as well. Exactly. I, I think it was Hormozy who said recently, when you get sick of talking about something, and I think for us in the mortgage space, a lot of it, yeah. we're sick of talking about rates. But when you get sick of talking about it, people are just starting to listen. So I think that appeals a lot to the realtors because, you know, they hear a lot from us, but like, what is the, the takeaway from it? If it's a high level strategy, sometimes it's hard to absorb that if you're busy in your own with your own clients and working on other things. Whereas you're like always the rate's going to be relevant. It's applicable to everyone you're working with. And it just gives you something factual that you can throw in there that makes it look like you're current and have knowledge outside of just showing the houses and putting offers together. Yeah, that's being on. And now uh, just to round out this episode too, we should have mentioned this at the start, but uh, re-listen to this, take some notes and implement. Some of these strategies are super quick to do, like form these email templates, get this going uh, because it's, I mean, I'm not uh, no uh, crystal ball here, but I think it's going to come sooner rather than later, especially with the Bank of Canada announcements. Um, so we could see it in the spring. So I would get ready, have some of these strategies ready. And some of them you could even use right away, like the the first one we talked about with the um, getting back into the market. Like you can do that right away in the new year. So mm -hmm. 100%. Set, set yourself up for success going into this year. It's going to come in like a wave. And if you're ready, you're just going to get to ride it. If you're not, you're going to get crushed and be trying to roll this stuff out when you're too busy. So either way, Always with the analogy, better, man. Yeah. you're so good. Always. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Before Tom, Tom pumps my tires too much, we're going to let you all go. Thank you for tuning in with us. Hope you had an awesome break and cheers to a great 2024. Let's go.